What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Rust Admin Academy. Now, if you've been with me for any length of time, you know in my previous videos, I've done a couple of different tutorials on the different types of skinning plugins that are available. I've done skins from Umod, I've done Skinbox from Chaos Code, I've done Skinner, which is available from Codefling as well as Lone.Design. And on today's video, I'm going to show you another skinning plugin that allows us to use the spray can that is natively built into Rust, which of course gives us the ability to use the skins that we already own, plus the different skins that are available from the workshop, all with one simple tool. Hey everyone, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy, where I teach you everything that you need to know about owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do plugin reviews, tutorials, plus I want to give you all of the different tools that are available to make your job just a little bit easier. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. And if you take any value out of this video particularly, do me a favor, hit that like button for me, leave a comment down below because we all know that YouTube feeds off of that kind of activity and that's the only way that my videos get any kind of attention. All right, so I actually feel kind of bad. There's a website that I trust that I quite often get a lot of plugins from that doesn't nearly get enough attention on my channel. And I don't know why that is because I actually really like the guy. He's a very honorable member in my Discord and a very highly valued member of my team. And that website is myvector.xyz. And yes, I actually have to say XYZ because saying a website address is XYZ just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't exactly flow off the tongue very well. So if you head on over to myvector.xyz and search for skin spray, this is what you're going to see. What this plugin allows us to do is utilize the native built-in spray can and still gives us the ability to use the skins that we already own. Plus, it gives us the ability simultaneously to use skins that are available from the workshop. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. As you can see right above my head, the cost of this plugin at the time of the recording of this video is only $12. I wouldn't be surprised that as things progress and as the plugin develops, this price might increase over time. Can't guarantee that. I don't know that for sure. In fact, I haven't even talked to Razor about doing a video on this plugin yet, so this isn't promotional, and I don't have any insider information on what the plugin is going to look like in the very near future. So I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to actually show you how the plugin works and what it does before I show you the behind the scenes stuff that you need to know so make sure you stay till the end of the video and catch all of that so as long as you have a spray can in your hand you should know by now that you can reskin items simply by right clicking on whatever that item is and it brings up this window that we're used to seeing but you're going to see on the right hand side of my screen we now have a different window that is showing us a bunch of workshop skins skins that i don't necessarily own but that we can now select and actually skin this item so in this case we're doing a double door we can of course pick one of the default skins that we already own or we can pick any one from this window on the right hand side. So just for poops and giggles, let's turn this into a set of speakers just like that. And boom, there we go. So we can do this on any item that is already deployed, just like we would with the regular skinning system that is already built into native Rust. But now we can use workshop skins as well. So now you're probably asking what else can we skin? Can we only skin items that are deployed? No, the answer to that question is you can literally skin any item in the game that is set up to accept a skin. So for example, let's say I wanted to skin this hammer. Let's just throw it on the floor and we do the same thing with the spray can. We right click on it and we can select a different skin for that item. We just pick it back up and there it is skinned in our inventory to what we just changed it to. Same thing with clothes. Let's uh, let's throw let's throw my pants down on the floor there and we can skin up those pants just like that. Pick them back up, throw them in my inventory. There we go. Now I have skinned pants. Literally anything that you can put a skin on it. Let's throw this knife down. Let's throw this gun down. Down, and let's throw this jackhammer out. We can do the same thing for all of those. Did you guys know that there's like 30 some odd workshop skins for the jackhammer? I did not know that. And we'll do the knife as well. Okay, so I'm not really sure why I can't skin that combat knife because I know there are skins available for it. It could be something wrong with my client. I'm not sure. But anyways, you get the picture. So there's the jackhammer that I just skinned. There's the LR that I just skinned. And obviously these doors that I just skinned. And of course my pants as well. So you can skin all different items all using the same method. You just toss it off your inventory and skin it while it's laying on the floor. Okay, so it didn't take me very long to figure out why I wasn't able to skin this combat knife. Apparently the combat knife is isn't part of the default configuration file. I'll show you all about that in just a minute, but just to show you that I was able to fix it, there's the combat knife and there I'm able to select the different skins that are available for it. So super simple plugin, it works really well. I'm hoping that there's a couple of maybe performance issues that are gonna get taken care of in the very near future. But like I said, I haven't spoke to Razor about this. He doesn't know that I'm making this video at all. So I don't know what his plans are specifically coming up. So for now, let's just jump into the configuration file so that you have a better idea of what that looks like. So the only thing that I've changed 
changed on this configuration file from what you would see from default is the total number of skins to download. I've changed this to 48. It was, I believe it was 12 by default. And then the only other thing that I did was add this combat knife to the configuration file so that I was able to show you that you can actually skin the combat knife as well. Now, as far as the syntax goes as to what this configuration file is supposed to look like, I can't really figure it out. For example, we've got wooden double door here and wooden double door here. I don't really understand what Razor's thought process is there because then you've got things like this. We've got the assault rifle and then the AK-47. This could be how these items are labeled on the Steam Skin Workshop. Maybe there's some skin designers out there that are calling the AK-47 the assault rifle or vice versa. And just having it written this way makes it so that this plugin will actually grab those skin IDs from the workshop. I'm not exactly sure. I'm also thinking that maybe Razor will reach out to me and let me know what the actual process is for this. And because Razor didn't ask me to do this video, so he's also not paying me to do this video, I can also critique it a little bit for the things that I find that maybe it's struggling with a little bit. If you do change the number of skins that are going to show up for each category, like for example, I have 48 here now, it can take a couple of minutes for the plugin to actually generate all of those skins. So as you can see here, it will individually go in and download each one of the skins up to the maximum value that we've allowed. In this case, it's 48. So that can take a couple of minutes. Now, that being said, this plugin is also not using image library. So I'm assuming all of these images for the skins have to be downloaded to the client. I'm not really sure how all of that works, but if that were the case, that would explain why it takes a couple minutes for it to download all of those skins. So that all being said, let's say there is something in your server that you don't want people to be able to skin using this process. For example, a lot of people like to get rid of the ability to skin an item using a clear skin, such as the armored door or the garage door. They both have clear skins, one of them is only clear one way. So you can see why it might be beneficial to remove that ability to use that skin. So you can just obviously delete that line, whatever it is out of the config, or you could just go down and add that skin item or description, whatever to the blacklist, which will make it so that people can't use it, but they can still use other skins for that same item. One other thing I did change in here, I actually forgot about that, was allow non-approved skins to download. By default, this is set to false, and I changed it to true just to get as many skins as I could for this video. And really, the only other thing that we need to deal with is the permissions for this plugin. At the time of the recording of this video, there's only two. There's one dot use and one dot admin. Obviously, if you want players to be able to use this plugin, they have to have that use permission granted to them. And the admin permission, I would have assumed that anybody that has the admin permission for skin spray wouldn't need to have building priv in order to skin an item. However, I did test that. And even though I have the admin permission granted to me, I still needed to have build priv in order to skin any of these items in this base. So maybe that part's not quite finished yet. I'm not really sure. Sure. All right, so I'm going to put all of the required links down in the video description down below. But do me a favor, since they just recently gave us the ability to change a server into hardcore mode, what do you guys think of hardcore mode so far? I haven't actually tried it out myself, but I'd definitely like to know what you guys think about it. Also, if you'd like to check out one of my other videos on the other skinning plugins that I've produced in the past, make sure you check out one of these videos right here, preferably both. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next week.